Hello there friend, my name is Jackie, and welcome to my channel. The holiday seasons are upon us, and I wanted to finish this year off with a bang. Going with something that is very fitting for the month of December, I decided to make the Mouse King from the classic Nutcracker story. Join me as I show you my process, so let's get to it! I will start by building the first of many heads with some aluminum foil. Once I have the general size and shape that I want, I can start applying the clay. I will be using original Super Sculpey. So it only became apparent to me as of last year that the original story depicts the Mouse King as this seven-headed monstrosity. After hearing that, I immediately knew I had to try and do my own take on this character. Waiting practically a whole year to start on this project was always concerning to me. I was afraid of losing motivation and never being able to finish something I started. Thankfully, the motivation was alive and well this time. Now for the ears, I'm switching to using cost clay. Works pretty much just like Super Sculpey, but stays flexible after baking which is perfect when sculpting fine and delicate details like this. Now to finish off this head with some eyes. This ball is still a little bit big, so I'm going to cut it down to size. I also plan on making each head have their own expression and personality. I'm making seven heads anyways, so having them all look the same is kind of boring. And we have our main head. I will be making the rest of the heads off camera since this will be redundant of me to show you this part again. Now that we have all our heads sculpted, I can now move on to the body. You know this guy's gotta be big, and I mean big, to support all these heads. I'll be using some toothpicks to help me figure out my placement. This part was quite difficult. It did make sense to me to have the heads wrap all the way around the body and I wanted the heads to be visible as much as possible. So I was fumbling a lot around this part. After what seemed like an eternity of frustration, I finally found a nice placement for all the heads. With that, I can finish poking up the rest of the body with more aluminum foil, using some tape to hold it all together. Forgot to make my armature for the hands and feet, so I'm doing it now. Again, using cost clay to help me for these little details. I want to bulk out all the necks a little more, so I'm adding more foil. And this is going to help me uh, cut down on using so much clay. Since I already pre-baked the body, I'll be adding a thin layer of clay over everything and running it over with this texturing tool to make it look like fur. Moving on to the tail, I decided to use some leftover cost clay medium I had lying around. I like the firmness of this to bulk out simple shapes for parts where I don't need to do a lot of elaborate details. Everything now is finally baked. Now 
Having all our pieces, it's now time to prime and finally paint. I initially wanted a mix of browns and grays for the body, but I wasn't really feeling it afterwards, so I just kind of went over everything with a dark gray and some lighter grays for shading and highlights instead. Going over some small areas now with more flesh tone of peaches and pinks. Always look forward to the painting process, since you can really see your work come to life with each stroke of your brush. I also switch between using wet and dry brushing techniques. I lean more towards dry brushing. From my experience, I have better control with where the paint goes. I finish everything off with a matte top coat spray. And this is the result! For another layer of detail, I'm using the thinnest fishing line I could find to make the whiskers. He's a mouse after all, so he's gotta have his whiskers. With the help of some super glue in gel form, very important. Well that's one head down, another six to go. Now on to making the coat for the Mouse King. I went with this rich violet cotton fabric and this short length fur as well. A pattern wouldn't exist for such a creature, so I just kind of eyeballed a general shape and just kind of hoping for the best. It didn't need to be perfect, so long as it looks passable. I sewed up the main part uh, with my sewing machine, and now going in for all the small parts with hand sewing. For an added touch, I'm mimicking the look of an ermine's fur that's commonly depicted with royal clothing with a marker. Finishing this coat off with some gold chain and details, I can start to assemble. For the crown, I looked around online and bought various charms meant for jewelry and just assembled them to make my own crown. Some more gold crown charms I found, since I wanted all the heads to be wearing a crown. I was having a hard time making a sword that looked decent enough, so I opted out for this novelty leather opening sword instead. I think it's a nice way to open all my monthly bills and junk mail. And with that, it's on to the final look. I had originally planned on this being a two-part series where I make the Nutcracker and the Mouse King. I was really adamant on at least finishing the Mouse King. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Hope you're having a wonderful holiday season, and I'll see you in the next one.